This video is going to be about the changes that took place in the late 1970s until the present. Just remember, we are where we are because we've done what we've done. And when we know better, we do better. And this course is about giving us a pathway to do better by understanding what we've been doing. Keep in mind the three global childbirth goals, live mother, live baby, dealing with suffering, and the recovery of the mother and the baby in the short, medium, and long term. And always interface those three goals with the three global health systems, traditional health and the massive diversity of that, modern health care, which is global, and natural health, which is that global or is that country specific? And also how these three childbirth goals and these three global health systems are impacted by the concepts, beliefs, the trends, or the viewpoints around childbirth. If you haven't yet watched the three videos on goals, on health systems and concepts, please do now. Something to keep in mind is that the childbirth concept, number one, that there's no way to know what your birth is going to be like, has been predominant, and it will always exist. That's the global truth. There's no way to know what your birth is going to be like. That sentence in traditional cultures was followed by, there's nothing you can really do to prepare for it. In traditional communities, as mentioned, the way every culture tried to deal with that that global truth was to have lots of do this, don't do this when you're pregnant with the specific goal to have a mother live through birth. They didn't like it, but were tolerant of babies dying at birth or in the newborn period. As mentioned, suffering was accepted and they did their best to help. And they didn't focus much on recovery, except in traditional communities, what you would know as a lying in period. As talked about in in the earlier videos, there were very rapid societal changes that shifted us from the diverse traditional health systems to the modern health system. Some of it occurred between World War I and World War II in developed countries, as mentioned, and others occurred between the 50s and the 70s. More births were now done in hospitals, where the assessments, monitoring procedures were done to prevent the death of birthing women. There was only a 5% cesarean rate because cesareans were major abdominal surgery done only to save the life of a mother. It was still accepted up to the late 1970s that babies might die in birth or afterwards. The way modern medicine dealt with suffering was through medical pain relief. No, they didn't focus much on the recovery. At the same time birth was becoming more medicalized, we also had the second childbirth concept, which was the skills-based approach to childbirth. And it was in response to the medicalization of birth. In other words, there was an effort made to separate low-risk women from high-risk women and by encouraging low-risk women to learn breathing skills and relaxation skills and to not be afraid of the birth, and therefore they would achieve those three sub-goals around childbirth, which was natural birth, pain-free labor without medical care. The 1950s was the beginning of the natural birth movement, and in some ways, the rise of the natural health movement as well. And this existed for a generation but this video is about the late 1970s to the present. Beginning in the middle of the 1970s, there were more rapid changes. Things began to become global. Prior to that, it was country to country, even local. And a new childbirth trend was being introduced that took hold in the 1980s until the present. And that is the concept number three of a choice-based childbirth trend that replaced the second one in the skills-based trend. Before we look at all those societal changes that led to a shift from skills-based to choice-based, let's look at the evaluation of concepts 
or systems. And this is important. It's called GIGO, that the quality of output is determined by the quality of input. Now, this is a mathematical, technological term, but we're going to overlay it with social and societal ways of thinking and responses. If you've watched the video on concepts, then you understand that a concept or a trend or a belief system or a viewpoint is based on a bright idea. And then words are created to pass on those ideas. The words have to be simple and clear for that idea to achieve a tipping point. The ideas and the words generate actions. The actions have to be taken up by many. Some actions become systems. Rarely, but sometimes, ideas, words, actions, systems lead to policies. And this is how they become integrated into our social and societal thinking and how we do things. Every idea is based on a desired goal or result. And so they get to be evaluated. When the results and goals are achieved, then we know the initial idea and actions are accurate. You can get here from there. However, within GIGO, when the results and goals aren't quite reached, then you have to go back and tweak something. But when the results and goals are not met, then you are full on into GIGO. And it means really that the ideas aren't accurate. And this is what has occurred in childbirth and why our nonprofit is creating this course for you. The primary goal is to have a live mother. In modern society, it's to have a live mother and a live baby. Concept one is always present. There is no way to know what your birth's going to be like. And therefore, within the GIGO principle, it's a successful concept because the idea is things can happen and the results are things can happen. In concept two, when we look at it, the idea was that a certain group of women, the low-risk women, should learn specific skills to achieve that natural birth pain-free labor with no medical intervention. But GIGO pointed to a lack of success. By the 1970s, natural birth advocates in the U.S. and in New Zealand, which at that point was not globally integrated, but both had Lamaze Bradley and Grantley Dick Reed classes, birth advocates in both countries, and you can check yours, didn't feel that enough low-risk women had achieved the goals by learning skills. Concept two didn't have a goal of reducing suffering, yet it was vastly achieved in the United States, but not recognized and definitely not built upon. Concept two, the skills-based approach, it was very focused on fathers being the coach. Even their success was not recognized by natural birth advocates, or it would have been carried on rather than changing fathers' roles from coaching to merely supporting women's choices. So under the GIGO principle, the natural birth movement said that results and the goals desired by the skills-based approach to childbirth concept two had not been achieved and we needed something else. And therefore, they developed concept three. And concept three developed along with the changes that were occurring at that time in the 70s globally. Before I talk about the impact of Concept 3 from the 80s to the present, I want to talk about those changes that impacted society. I lived with them. As I mentioned, I gave birth in 1970 in Concept 2, and 12 years later, a mere 12 years later, I gave birth in Concept 3. So what were the changes in society in the 70s? A massive change was effective birth control and safe and legal terms terminations. This meant people had smaller families. It was coupled with the feminist movement. Women wanted to be able to work and they wanted reproductive and sexual equality. Also, because families became smaller, families became more risk averse. It was a period of time, whether you like it or not, of the rise of antibiotics and immunizations. 
People in modern countries don't want things to go wrong compared to how people feel in traditional communities who live with whatever happens. And this had a huge and profound impact on the cesarean rate in the 70s. And that was that women started to wear bikinis. You might laugh at this, but if you had a cesarean with an ugly scar, you were too embarrassed to wear a bikini. And fashion was important. And having more freedom about exposing parts of our body was becoming more fashionable. So there was pressure put on the medical community by women to have a cesarean that didn't leave an ugly scar, in which we could be awake and have our husband with us, and in which we could have a safer attempt to have a vaginal birth after cesarean. Therefore, the cesarean rate tripled from 5% when I gave birth in 1970 to 13% in 1982. Women were no longer interested in the long labors that were accepted. The modern medical profession was looking to make certain that risks didn't become problems and problems didn't become tragedies. At that time, also in the late 70s, was the beginning of the internet, global communication, and by the 80s, it was the great global restructuring of the free market and things like airplanes. Also, you need to remember that medical advances we talked about between the First and Second World War continued. In the 1980s, epidurals became available because women wanted to be awake but not feel pain. The childbirth goal, too. Rogam became available. Babies died because of blood incompatibility. The death of the baby was no longer accepted. And that's why constant fetal monitoring occurred and ultrasounds, vacuum, and different forms of inductions. And what was happening at this time in the late 70s was a displeasure by natural birth advocates about the skills that they were not achieving the demedicalization of birth. And so they threw out concept two, and it was actively thrown out. Read famous authors. Skills aren't necessary. Cows and cats aren't taught skills to birth. Birth is instinctive. It's natural. Women know what to do. Fathers shouldn't coach. They should only support women's choices. Every benefit that my generation experienced in concept two, a skills-based approach, disappeared by the time I gave birth 12 years later. That during this time, the concept that we want you to spread developed in the skills-based concept two and doubled down in the concept three of the choice-based. Because birthing better families really, really understood the importance of being skilled. They just wanted broader skills more in-depth skills and skills that could be used in all births, and they understood the importance of working together as a family. How do you express the ideas of Concept 3? You know it. It's around today. Women know what they want. They know the kind of birth they want. And what are the words and messages that are given to explain that idea? Do research and make a birth plan. And what are the actions? Make a birth plan and make choices. And are there systems around Concept 3? There were Lamaze and Bradley instructors. Not so much about Concept 3, except in New Zealand, where the New Zealand midwifery model of care was put in place in 1990. Are policies put in place around a choice-based system? Not really, except in New Zealand, this became a major issue because choices were ingrained in policy. And that meant that women were going to New Zealand obstetricians and saying, I want a cesarean without a medical reason. And doctors found themselves in a quandary. But because choices had been embedded in policy, they couldn't refuse choices. You can't have choices that say, no to medical care, but not permit people to say yes to more medical care. In this concept three that we live in today, you know what the goal 
models of concept two were natural birth, pain-free labor, no interventions. Now, there were sub-goals in the choice-based trend. Birth was now a highlight experience that should occur without medical intervention. It should occur at home, in water, with a midwife, with women trusting birth and left alone to discover labor by themselves. I'm asking you to evaluate from a GIGO principle, have enough women since the 1980s achieved these goals of concept three? If they have, then the ideas, the words, and the actions are right. And if they haven't, then the ideas are not accurate. And here's where things get very complex. Since concept three, the choice-based trend was really spread out, there has been a huge rise in shame, blame, guilt, disappointment, anger, frustration, and trauma after birth syndrome that did not exist during the generation of the skills-based trend. What did concept three also bring in? We know that the bottom line childbirth goal number one, the most important, is a live mother and in modern societies, also a live baby because we have fewer children. And that brought forward the increase in assessments, monitoring, and procedures. But the natural birth movement in the 80s started to say a live mother and a live baby isn't the only thing. There's more to birth than that. And that's where those sub-goals got developed. So how do we deal with childbirth goal one? You, as ICPA members, also are focused on you do not want a stuck baby that results in a mother dying. Childbirth goal two, you've heard it said you wouldn't have a root canal without pain relief. Why would you give birth without pain relief? So the question becomes, is it easier or harder to cope with on and off pain that can last for hours and hours and hours by just trusting it and letting it happen or by learning and using skills in order to cope and manage, work through, deal with, handle, stay on top of, and feel in control? The skills of concept two in the skills-based trend didn't fail. They had an exceptional success. It just wasn't recognized and built on, except for what our trust has been doing. Families wanted to cope and manage better in all birth circumstances, and fathers wanted the skills to help their birthing partners do that. The third childbirth goal of recovery, both common knowledge trust and ICPA, is very focused on that. We don't want women's bodies damaged from giving birth to a baby. And we don't want babies damaged by struggling to get out of a tight body. In reality, choices are great when you have them or they don't change or you like them in the long run, but they don't help you do the activity. Skills are what you need to do the activity of birthing your baby. And as we said in the 70s and the 80s and up to today, skills and choices should go together with the emphasis on the doing part, not the wanting part. And now we have a choice. We are here because of everything that's gone before. And in the 50 years I've been involved in this conversation, there is no place to go except the concept that everyone should become skilled when pregnant and use skills to birth their baby. The time's right. It's a generational shift. It incorporates concept one. There's no way to know what your birth's going to be like. The skills-based trend and the choice-based trend. And it supports strongly the childbirth goals of dealing with suffering and recovery to the mother and baby. Our trust believes ICPA organization members can bring forth this amazing and exciting new idea. And what's the idea? Everyone should become skilled and fathers should be the coaches. And what are the words of this new concept? When pregnant, take action, self-learn birth and birth coaching skills and use them. What's the system that's put in place? It's word of mouth and consistency. And what are the policies? That could have happened only in New Zealand where there is a midwifery-led maternity system, but it didn't. And I'll explain that in the New Zealand video. All you have to do is to learn to say this easily and to do it in different ways. 
For example, you're pregnant. Here's a handout of various skills-based methods. Pick what suits, use your skills when giving birth. Or you might say, I'd like to give you a handout of various skills-based methods. I'd recommend that you choose one or more. Learn the skills, then use them during your birth. Or you say your husband's keen to get involved. Here's a handout of skills-based methods. Learn some skills together and then work together during the birth of your baby. And from your side, keep simple notes. What method did each client use? What skills did they learn over time? And what were the successes and gaps?